Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Southland Field at Big Joe Two-Tone Park, where this afternoon, one of these teams will advance to the state semifinals. They split the first two games on Thursday night. We'll talk about that. It was a crazy night, but now it comes down to one game. This is KBZ Sports Director Seth Thomas sitting on side of KWBJ's Aaron Artigo. And Aaron, the other night was crazy, but tonight, same lineups, everything the same, but one of these teams is going to move on to the state semifinals. That's exactly how it's going to work. It's the best two out of three. They split the first two, and you couldn't ask for two more different ball games to be played in the same night. But uh, that's what we got the other night. We're going to play one for all the marbles today. Win and go home, win and go on, lose and go home. And the same two pitchers that started the game, right. and that's I guess that's good news for Covenant Christian because Connor Mathern didn't allow a run in his two innings. Mm -hmm. You look on the flip side, Ty SJ, they racked him around a little bit, but he came out in the first inning. So right. neither one really threw a lot of pitches. Right. So I expect to see a different Ty SJ. Mm -hmm. You're going to get a good Connor Mathern. But we both talked about this before. We don't believe this is going to be one of those 3-2 ball games. Yeah. We believe there's going to be some scoring and some hitting. Yeah. I, I, I agree with you. This is this is not going to be a low-scoring game. The, the other night, we one thing we did see was a lot of scoring. You know, you had a, a 15 to two ball game, I think it was, and a 17 to nine ball game. So there was nothing close in either one of those two ball games. That the final score was anyway. But you know, it was very entertaining baseball. Though. And you know, a lot we, of hit balls. <laughs> we saw home runs. Yep. We saw bunts. We saw some outstanding fielding, right. and we saw Absolutely. some not so great fielding. We yep. saw some base so running there. So we got a little of everything in those right. two games. A lot of good and a little bit of bad. And you know, when you got two games like that, the mistakes aren't uh, as polarizing as it can be today because right. a mistake right. today can send you home. That's it. You're, that's it. It's win and, win and go on, lose and go home. And if you win, yeah. the winner of this game will go to Calvary Baptist up in Shreveport for the state semifinals. The finals are at Southeastern over in Hammond next Saturday, but the semifinals will be at Calvary Baptist. They beat Calic High a point to P, uh, six, nothing. They lost the second one, nine, four, and then one, three to two. But here, we're set to get underway. Caleb O'Connor will lead it off for the Eagles, the shortstop. He wears number six, the Eagles, and then navy blue tops with the white numbers outlined in red. Eagles across the front and the white pants. First pitch for third, and then for a strike. The home team. White tops, white bottoms, a maroon stripe with Covenant across the front, the big C on the sleeve. O'Conn back from the left side. Here's the 0-1. Her ball just missed. We talked about this umpire the other night. He was on yeah. the bases. <laughs> he's behind the plate. He's every bit of 6'8". He might uh, be taller. He, yeah, he's, he's not less than that for sure. And when you're 5'6", that's a tall human being. Here's the pitch. That ball's outside, two and one. Mathern got that good fastball. And Kirby, of course, the other night he got such a big lead, it was pretty easy picking. That pitch is on the inside corner strike. Remember, O'Conn started the game off with a base hit. With a base hit, yeah. And he got caught off the base. Two, two is the count. Here's the pitch from Mathern. Down low, tried to overthrow that fastball just a little bit. Gregory Hamer bat second, Ty SJ is in the third spot. Drake Burgess is the cleanup hitter. Brandon Cordero hits fifth. Thomas Nini sixth, Nicholas Vitale seventh. Ethan, Ethan Wiggins eighth, and Ryan Tomple hits in a nice spot. Payoff pitch, ball hit out to short. It's the ground, he's got to make the throw. He's up the line, and they got him. Throw was off the mark a little bit. It threw it on the inside, but the first baseman, good job on his part. That's Brennan Champagne. He comes off the bag, makes the catch, and then makes the tag on Ocon to get the out. It was a line drive to short, but you immediately saw the home plate umpire give the safe signal. Yeah. That means he saw it bounce, hit the ground right in front of him. He had to make the throw. It came up the line, but he did make the tag, so there's one out. Here is Gregory Hamer, the second baseman. Hamer fouls one over the right side. And snowballs and a strike. The other night against Mathern, there wasn't a lot of strike. Again, they only pitched two innings. He only had one strikeout. He was able to get a couple hits off of him, so they have seen him. That pitch is right through that far strike. Sun setting behind us again. We saw. Uh, top play was it? Miss a, miss a ball in the outfield. He yeah. just lost it. So yeah, lost it in the sun because he's looking right into that sun, the right fielder. 
Sun is sitting behind the third base dugout, and that right field is looking right into that sun for yes. probably another 45 minutes to an hour at least. This miss is way outside. And we don't have the wind we had the other night, Aaron. Another night that with a uh -oh. gale force wind blowing out to left. Tonight got a little breeze, but nothing like we had. One and two to count, one out, nobody on. Top of the first. Here's Mathern's pitch. Fastball again. Hamer reaches out and fouls it out of play. Hamer, the second baseman. Mathern works out of the stretch even with nobody on base. It's one, two delivery. Fastball strike three. Hamer thought looking, looked like he was looking for a curveball yeah. and got the fastball and just couldn't take the cut. Yeah, that was a, a meaty fastball, and he looked at it go in for the third strike. And I also believe it's very important for a team to get out in front early here. You put all kind of pressure on that other team, so I believe the team that gets out in front has a definite distinct advantage. And a lot of times if, to get ahead of a pitcher is you got to start early. If you let that pitcher pitch two or three scoreless innings, he gets in a groove, he comes much more difficult later. So a lot of times, you might not think that first inning counts for a whole lot, but it can set the tone for the whole ball game. SJ down the line in right field, and that's in for a hit. He rounds first, he's headed for second. He's got a triple on his mind, but they hold him up right there. Hi, SJ. With a two out double as he just went with the pitch, drove it down the right field line. That right field line, Aaron, is right in uh, yeah, I thought that was going to be a foul ball. Yeah, you yeah. couldn't tell because <laughs> the dugout, and they're all standing on that dugout. You can't mm -hmm. see, but you saw SJ just take off for second. And Eagles with a chance to get on top here with Drake Burgess. Two outs, SJ out at second. And now he'll want the catcher to come out. We saw this a lot the other night where when they got a runner at second, they were relaying the signals, and they need to make sure they're on the same page. That's usually the case when it's such a quick trip. Just walk right out there, say one or two things, and you turn right around and come back. That's usually like just getting getting everybody all on the same page. A third curveball foul tip. Ahead of that one a little bit. Now you got to gear up for that good fastball, and that's what makes that curveball even better. 0-1 oh, to count, SJ with his lead at second. There's a pitch down low. SJ caught oh, off the base. Him. He's trying to get the third. Now he's in the rundown. This looks oh so familiar from the other night. Oh, SJ no. tagged out. SJ was leaning the catcher, throws it down to second. He breaks for third. Mm -hmm. And he is caught in the rundown. So that'll do it for the Eagles in the first. No runs, one hit, no errors, and no one left. We head to the bottom of the first. Central Cali nothing and Covenant Christian coming to bat. Bad credit, slow credit, no credit, new credit, bankruptcy, repossession, or foreclosure. Whatever your situation is, Harley at A.J. Doman Chevrolet is ready to help you. Visit A.J. Doman Chevrolet in Berwick, 800 Robinson Street, or call Harley at A.J. Doman Chevrolet at 985-221-4139. And also, high school baseball on KWBJ Live is presented by CORE Physical Therapy and Sports Performance here to restore the quality of life you deserve on Brashier Avenue in Morgan City. A.J. Doman Automotive Family at the foot of the Morgan City Bridge in Berwick. The fourth annual Nicholas Bogner Foundation Par 3 Golf Tournament, Saturday, June the 11th at St. Mary Golf Club. Call 992-8943 for team or sponsorship information. Mike Senna congratulates out to the Berwick Panthers who advanced to the state semifinals. They shut out Grant again today. Both of those games, 13-3. So the Panthers now move into a 10 o'clock one-game semifinal on Thursday over at McMurray Park in Sulphur. They will play Sterlington, a team they're very familiar with. Mm -hmm. Sterlington swept West Feliciana. That's number one seed against a four seed. The side, other side of the bracket, the seeds held as well. Number two, Iota beat Erath in two games. They'll take on number three, the Lutcher Bulldogs. Lutcher shut out Iowa 2-0 and 7-0. That game also at 10 o'clock. Finals set for Saturday over in Lake Charles. 
And uh, Seth, I, I went to that uh, Berwick baseball game, and Berwick was actually losing that game three to one going into the fourth inning. In the fourth inning, they bust open for eight runs, highlighted by Carl, Carter Williams' three-run home run. And then in the fourth, they scored, uh, or rather in the fifth, they scored four more to go up 13-3 and then held Grant to, to nothing in the bottom and ended up winning that ball game. And before we go any further, we'd like to wish all the moms out there a very happy Mother's Day oh, tomorrow, absolutely. especially my mother, Merle Thomas. I'd like to wish her a happy Mother's Day. And my daughters, Haley Page and Sarah, which is Mary Thomas, a very special and happy Mother's Day as well. But all the mothers tomorrow, mm -hmm. happy, happy Mother's Day. Great day to be celebrated, and rightly so to honor all the mothers throughout our country. Here's SJ on the hill for the Eagles facing Peyton Trosclair. First pitch is a strike. Remember, they roughed up SJ. He got the first one out, and then they went on to send 17 uh, batters to the plate in the first inning. That ball is hit out to the gap in right center, and that's going to be a base hit. I was actually hit on the handle pretty much and just muscled it out. It's one of those that you always hear. It's an aluminum bat hit. It's a wooden bat out. You know? They hadn't got him out hardly all series. No. He has been red hot. Here's a guy that's been hot as well, Connor Mathern. He was two for two in that first game, including a three-run homer. He got on base all four times. Got to be careful with him. The runner at first, no outs. He was not expecting a bunt. I wouldn't think he would be. Runner off with the pitch and it hit him. Hit him on the elbow. Well, that's not the start you want if you're the Central Cali Eagles. You know, I hate to say this, but this is starting out very similarly to a couple of nights ago. Got a guy on base, got caught stealing. Got caught actually leaning the wrong way and ended up having a three up, three down, and then they came back, just knocked the ball all over the place. And we'll have a courtesy runner and, over uh, at first base. He said they had 17 hitters, as you said, but they also scored 13 runs in that first inning. Didn't score but two more runs the rest of the ball game, but didn't need many more well, after that. The damage that. had been done. Here's JT Tutone, a DH, hitting from the left side. SJ out of the stretch. Pitch is outside, ball one. Again, these two guys talking about Mathern and Tutone. I don't believe you'll get many bunts. No. <laughs> They're up there to swing the bat and do some damage. Well, Tutone's playing with a hurt hamstring already, so you really don't expect it. Or if it is a bunt, it's going to be truly a sacrifice. Here's the 1 0. Fastball popped up. Nini gives it a look. He's over by the line, and he makes the catch. Right up against the fence. Nene just stayed with it, put that offhand up against the fence to hold his spot and made the catch. Off the bat, it didn't look like it was going to stay in play, but it, it did. And that's the one thing Nene did. He ran to the fence and was able to drift back. Some people slowly go to the fence, and then when they get close, they, they right. kind of yeah, they, wince, they, and it's hard for them to get it, but they, Nene did a great job right yeah. there. They've tried to time it to let them and the ball get there at the same time. No, the best way to do is get there and wait for the ball. So one out, still runners at first and second, and here is Hayden Scott. He's the second baseman. That ball is popped up out of play over the grandstands. No balls in a strike. Eagles, as we mentioned, got shut out in game one. Game two, at one point, they were down 9-3. Mm -hmm. And boy, things didn't look good, but them Eagles kept believing, and they scored 14 unanswered runs. SJ looks in. A one, that hit him. Well, well, this is nothing for SJ. We saw against Opelousas Catholic, he threw a three hitter and hit five batters. Yeah. So, unfortunately. So that, that'll load the bases, and, and two of the base runners were hit by a pitch. The other night, we saw a lot of batters get hit by pitches in those two ball games. Between the two of them, we must have seen 15 to 20. That might be a high number, but it was a lot was a of lot. them. It was a bunch of them. Zach Dupree now steps in, I, the right fielder. That 
pitches in there for a strike. Third and first playing in, they'll try to come home with it. Meanwhile, the middle will try to turn two. Bases loaded, one out. SJ in the windup. Curveball swing and a miss. Big curveball. And Dupree went after it, and he, that wasn't near it. It broke low and away from him. Totally fooled on that one. 0 oh, 2 to count. The wind by SJ. As the ball hit the right field, and that'll get down for a hit. One run is in. They're waving the next one. Top lane throw. It'll be cut off, and Covenant Christian breaks out on top, 2 to nothing. A little soft liner, right down the right field line, stays in bounds for a fair ball. And Dupree comes up with a double. So two RBIs, runners at the corners. You know, that ball, after that curveball on the outside, he came back with another fastball on the outside, and Dupree just kind of served it into right field. We got early action in the bullpen. Bodie Hoffauer back up down in the Eagle pen. We saw him come in in that second game on Thursday. <laughs> 2-0 Covenant Christian, bottom of the first, still just one out. Runners at first and third, runner going from first. Pitches a strike, the throw comes back to the pitcher. Got him leaning off the third, but he was able to get back. They fired it right back to the pitcher, the third the guy on third, that's Scott. Well, he was leaning a little bit, but he was able to get back. So it'll be a stolen base for Dupree, and now they got runners at second and third. Brennan Champagne, first baseman, at the plate. The ball hit down the line and left. And it'll be foul out of play. So no balls and two strikes. He had Dupuy 0-2. Mm -hmm. He was able to fight it off our base hit. Let's see what he does with Champagne here. Yeah, that was an excellent job by Dupuy. He just reached out and slapped that ball down the first base line. The ball was low, one and two. Got to keep it here at 2 nothing. 1-2 pitch. Pop up over the first base. Stuck out this time as he's out in front of the curveball. But the Eagle defense, I had the, the, the fielders on the corners playing up on the grass, right on the grass line, where your middle infielders are playing straight away. Outfielders all playing straight away. But uh, as you mentioned, important to try not to give up any more runs here. That pitch down low, two and two. <laughs> SJ looks in. The ball hit on the ground. Burgess makes a stab. All he can do is touch the base. The ball took him to the base. That's all he really could do. Right. Scott was going on contact, so the run scores. The Eagles get an out. Now runner at third with two outs. And if our prediction is right, if it ain't going to be a low-scoring game, then yeah. <laughs> every out, you can, every run you can prevent yep. is big. And it says they can get them out with two outs. Here. Here's Carson Abear, the center fielder. But that was a good heads-up play by Burgess over there at first base. So see, he could have tried to go home maybe and maybe had a play, maybe not. Then nobody's out. But the smart thing is to be sure you get an out, especially in the first inning of the ball game. I think if they hit it right at him, but mm – -hmm. Yeah, it went he, to his glove hand side, which pulled him to first. Right, so I he, think that yeah. made a difference where he's just going to touch the base. Right. Well, he had to make a hard move towards the base and his momentum, and it kind of turned him a little bit. And he was, it would have been a tough throw to come back and get him out. And if he got the risk, wasn't worth the reward. If we were in the sixth inning, in a th two oh. or three run game, it's a different play. But, but here in the first inning, gets the out. 3 0 is a count on Abair. Pitches down low, and that's ball four. So first base on balls by SJ, but it's been two hit by a pitch, and here comes Coach Hidalgo to have a word with his pitcher. Let's see what he chooses to do. You get in this situation, the thing is that you can't get behind too far. No. Especially no. with a guy like Mathern on the other side. Because, yeah. like I said, we only watched him for, what, I think two innings and pitched the other night, and, and um, they weren't able to do much against him. 
They got a hit in the first inning. That runner got caught leaning the wrong way. They had a hit tonight in the first inning. Again, got caught leaning the wrong way. Ended up being a three up, three down inning. Coach Hidalgo decides to stay with his senior, and I think that might have something to do with it too. Mm -hmm. SJ, a senior out there, and he has the confidence in him to be able to get out of this thing, but we got first and third with two outs. And here is John Richard. He had a three-run homer in that game, first game on Thursday night. Catcher. SJ out of the stretch. On her going, pitch goes down, and they'll get him in the rundown. O'Conn chasing him down. They make the tag. They got him in the run, doesn't score. They were going to try to go halfway, get him in the rundown long enough for the run to score. Mm -hmm. But the Eagles play it perfectly, and they get the out. Well, that's the way to get out of it. Yep, that'll work. <laughs> Caught stealing by Abair for the third out, but Covenant picks up three runs on two hits. There was no errors, and they left one. We played one inning. It's three to nothing, Covenant Christian. You know, it's gonna be tough to get to him in the late innings. Here's Drake Burgess. A good pitcher, such as Ed Mathern. He gets in a groove, and then you, the better he pitches, less confidence your hitters have. And that's a comebacker on the first pitch. Mathern will field it, easily throw Burgess out at first. And there's one away. And here comes Cordero. Brandon Cordero, the left fielder, he had a couple big hits in that second game. First pitch, down low, ball one. Cordero is the Eagles starting left fielder. That's all fine out of play. He's under this one, popped it up, straight back. Cardero back in the box. Fastball driven again over the first base dugout. You know, the thing that makes the park kind of unique is most parks, you'll see the fence from the dugout to the foul lines kind of stay the same distance. This one comes back in, so the fence is at the, at the foul pole, actually probably about 10 feet closer to the line than they are at the dugout. Oh, yeah. It's kind of, that's why mm -hmm. sometimes it looks like them balls are going to be foul. Right. And they're not. Odero lashes another one, foul stays alive. SJ's double. I thought sure it was a foul ball from where we're sitting. We're sitting down low. We're actually below the infield slightly uh, where we're sitting. And like you said, the way that's described and, and built in the first base dugout and just looking down there, I said, I, I thought that was well out of bounds. <laughs> Cordero grounds to second base. Scott picks it up, fires it over to first, and there's two away. Cordero kind of hit that one off the end of the bat. Hit a little slow roll to the second base. Second baseman there, Hayden Scott, just waited for it, picked it up, had plenty of time, made the out. Here's Thomas Nini, the third baseman. Two outs, nobody on, top of the second. <laughs> Governor Christian leading 3 nothing. Good curveball for strike one. Mm, nice curveball, just catches that inside corner. That was, that's a hard pitch to hit. One you shouldn't even swing at, swing at with no strike, especially. You just hope you don't get one of those with two strikes. 0-1 oh, pitch. Another curveball stayed outside, one and one. You know, the umpire is already tall, and the catcher, he likes to get down, extend that leg. Mm -hmm. Kind of like Tony Pena, and he leaves him awfully exposed to <laughs> the home plate umpire. That pitch is high, two and one. A lot of people probably don't remember yeah. Tony Pena or yeah. Manny Sanguin. Yeah, Tony Pena for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Yeah, Manny Sanguin used yeah. to do that too yeah. for the Pirates. Yeah. That's low, 3-1. They got their right leg extended all the way out. Right. They're actually sitting. Sitting down, yeah, sitting on the ground. You can only do that with no runners right. on base. Yeah. Okay. You yeah. don't want to do it with people on. You have a hard time getting yeah. up. 
Hard to throw people out when you're sitting down. Here's the 3 1. Fastball hit on the ground wide at first. Now to count full. Three sixteen down the lines, three forty five in the power alley, about three sixty out the center field. Payoff pitch down low, Nini. The base on balls over the second inning. The Eagles have a runner with two outs. Here's Nicholas Spitali. Spitali had a good two games the other night. He got two hits in the first game, got a hit in that second game as well. DH, he's batting for Tate Fontenot. And, and Fontenot is today's uh, kitchen. Has been for the last three or four weeks, I think. And the ball hit on the ground at first. Right. First baseman will scoop it up and easily touches the base. That'll retire the side for the Eagles. No runs, no hits, no errors, and they left one. We go to the bottom of the second. It's coming at Christian three. Central Catholic, nothing. All righty, folks. High School Baseball on KWBJ Live is presented by Core Physical Therapy and Sports Performance, here to restore the quality of life you deserve. On Brashier Avenue in Morgan City. A.J. Doman, automotive family at the foot of the Morgan City Bridge in Bowie. The fourth annual Nicholas Boner Foundation Part 3 Golf Tournament, Saturday, June the 11th at St. Mary Golf Club. Call 992-8943 for team or sponsorship information. Feast on a new White Hot Ranch nacho fries. Day after day at Taco Bell. Grilled steak loaded on seasoned fries, topped with warm nacho cheese sauce and the new White Hot Ranch. DoorDash now available at Taco Bell in Morgan City and Bayou Vista. It'll be Richard Rogers and back to the top of the order and Trostglare to face SJ. And I think from here on out though, Aaron, mm -hmm. Coach Tadao is have a pretty quick hook. You're gonna have to keep somebody warm yeah. and loose because again, you just can't afford to get too far behind yes. in this winner take all game. That's the truth, you know, you're down three. <clears throat> you, you batted twice, you got one hit, but really you've only sent one extra batter. That was the last batter before uh, they got the third out, but uh, had a one walk, one hit, and pretty much Connor has, Mathern, has been in control. Here's uh, Rishaw Schumier. Uh, yes. Here's yeah. Rishaw. He was at the plate mm -hmm. when our A Bear was caught stealing first pitch. All one. Don't have as many people out there in the glow zone tonight in right yeah. field. Got a few, but not as many as they had. That's a good fastball strike. What? Thursday night was Thursday. Yes. And this is Saturday night. Oh, it's, it's all, the, all together <laughs> it's, different. This is a whole different world. 1-1, one, one, curveball yeah. down low. One, two balls and a strike. Of course, what better way to start off your Saturday night right. though, than in high school baseball, especially a playoff game. Quarterfinals. 2-1, ball hit on the ground out to Ocon. He stays with it, fires it across. Low throw, but Burgess digs it out. Good job by Burgess over on first base. And that's the first out. As we told you, the winner moves on to the semifinals. Now, in years past, when you went to Sulphur, the semifinals and finals were there. Right. But since the split, now the semifinals will be at the higher seed, which would be Calvary Baptist. They're the fifth seed. Of course, Covenant 8, Central Cali 16. And then the final would be at Southeastern. First pitch strike one to Tristan Rogers, the short stop. Do you know, Seth, that there's a reason why they just didn't go ahead and have the semi like they did in Sulphur, but just do the whole thing, the semis and the finals in Hammond. Great stop by Nini, and he fires it wide at first. Tell you what, that's a tough play, because he forced it just to kind of glove it, and then he turned, but I guess you're gonna have to give him an error. Just, that's a tough error, but he's gonna get it. Well, especially when you, had, it took a great play to make the catch, okay? And, and, and then he turns around and throws it over his head. Eight, he, I agree with you, it's gotta go in the book as, a, as an error. Here's Peyton Trostclair. Now look, the Division One semifinals are there and finals, oh, but yeah? two, three, and four, and five, they're not. So I don't know what's uh, the reasoning, but. Don't always have a lot of reasoning <laughs> no, no. with the LHSAA, but. I don't know if it's because it's the same weekend and a lot of people will be in Sulphur. 
and they, you know, have a crew there, or I'm not sure, or you make more money at home, uh, you know, whatever uh, it is. Yeah. Oh, one to count on the third baseman of the Lions. Runner at first with one out. Fastball strike on the outside corner. That's a nice pitch right there. He just catches that outside corner, paints that outside corner for the call strike two. Good job by SJ. Prosclair has been a thorn in the Eagle side all series. That's a quick throw to first, but Rogers back safely. SJ out of the stretch. The 0 2 curveball is down low. And the runner is jogging the second. Called it. Somebody must have called a ball. Yeah, there had to be a balk yeah, out here somewhere. Okay. I'm assuming the first day somebody. Had to call a ball. I didn't see him put his hands up, yeah. but they're not I debating it. Yeah. So the balk moves the runner the second. I, well, he was jogging, and I'm like, 0 oh, 2. Swing and a miss. That's strike three. For Crossfire, down on strike for the second out. A good curveball by SJ. And here Mathern. comes Mathern. And see, this is the thing about Mathern. You got a base open, but you can't walk because you got two tone behind him, so you got a little protection. Right. Two outs, runner at second. SJ trying to get out of this thing with no damage. As a pitch, that ball fouled. First base way. 0-1. It would be so important for the Eagles to get out of this without giving up any runs. They have the opportunity now with two outs and a runner on second base. The problem is you got the three two hole hitter at the plate right now. That's a good Ooh. curve ball fouled back into the mitt of Fontenot and it's two strikes. Nothing in two with two outs and Rogers stands on second base. Big pitch right here for SJ. Can't give him anything fat. Here's the 0-2. Another curveball popped out of play down the first base line. We were told when yeah. we made that comment, Aaron, yeah. about the uh, glow, line, glow zone, mm -hmm. someone said they might be waiting for the sun to go down. <laughs> they, it's right out in the sun oh, for yeah, them, too. Right. So. And, and they're looking straight into it. That's so true. maybe when the sun goes down, yeah. you'll see them. Fill it up. Yep. 0 2 the count. Rogers out at second. Two outs. Fastball ripped in the left field. Cordero fielded. Here comes the throw. It's up the line. SJ will cut it off, and that's an RBI single. That ball is just right down the middle, and Mathern turned it around for a base hit. And that's the kind of two out hit you can't give up. No, that hurt. That hurt. He had such a good pitch, the previous pitch, and it was a curveball breaking low and away. And, and Mathern had to go down and just get a piece of it to stay alive. Could one he couldn't lay off of, he stayed alive, and the next pitch he just hits a solid line drive to left field. First pitch to two tone in there for a strike. He fouled out to third his first time up. So four nothing covenant here, bottom of the second, two outs. Courtesy runner over at first base. Oh one the count on the Lion DH. That fastball, same spot. Mm. It's a strike and it's 0-2. Oh, that's a tough pitch to hit right there. Well, he's right Good on job. top of the yep. plate, and you come mm -hmm. right the inside. It's, it's very tough. Yeah, he's got his toes right up against the batter's box line. Runner going for first. Curveball hit on the ground, the second. Hamer will field it. He's got plenty of time, throws the first for the out. And not a retired aside, but a big two out RBI single by Connor Mathern. Puts another run across. We played two complete. And the score, Covenant Christian four, Central Catholic nothing. Former state representative Sam Jones tips his hat to the Central Catholic Eagles in the Eagle community tonight. Go Big Red, first focus and determination. The high marks of not only the Central Catholic Eagles, but also the Central Catholic Eagle community. And local faces treating local people. Urgent Care, Morgan City, open seven days a week. Call 985-412-2020.
Urgent Care of Morgan City still testing for COVID-19. Urgent Care says Go Eagles. So does Verdon's Agency. Insurance Agency of Patterson in Morgan City. Get a quote today. Call 985-401-1184. Also, high school baseball on KWBJ Live is presented by Taco Bell in Morgan City and Bayou Vista. Open late night. Delivery through DoorDash. Conrad Industries serving St. Mary Parish in the marine industry since 1948. KGCurbside.com, your complete online grocery store, including local and regional products. Check our website for delivery options from our curb to yours. G&J Curbside and Allen's Communications, locally owned TV, cable, internet, and telephone service. Call 384-8335. Well, <laughs> I see it, but it's hard to believe. I've been following this score the whole time. Yesterday, number two, Ascension Catholic, who we talked about could have been the best team in the state. They beat number seven, St. Fred's, 13-3. to three. That was on Thursday. Well, today, St. Fred's wins two games. Wow. As the ball fouled out of play, they win 9-7, and they win 10-2. So, number seven, St. Fred's into the semifinals against number three, Washita Christian, who beat Sacred Heart twice today. So two teams from Monroe come back and turn the trick. Has the ball hit the right field. Pretty well hit. Ethan Wiggins hits it over the head. And the right fielder, he'll get a double. A stand-up double for Wiggins. And I was just about to say, they're in third inning here. The Eagles have got the answer. And Wiggins does, starts it off with a double, and here's Ryan Tomplay, the right fielder. They gotta start making, getting some hits off this pitcher. Okay, making him work a little bit harder. You know, that was the eighth hitter, and he's batting for the first time in the third inning. So in division four, you don't see it often. Number one and number two bounced right. out before the semifinals. Yeah. Tomplay stands in. Just high, ball one. Top of the order, Caleb O'Conn's on deck. Ryan Town play at the plate. He is the Eagle right fielder. That ball fouled out of play. Yeah, this hit off the handle. Got under a little bit, popped it straight back. Been a lot of balls fouled first base way. Um, Right-handed batters off of both pitchers. I know. Had a couple doubles out there. <laughs> and, a, and one or two singles as well. Here's the one one. Not to mention a whole lot of foul balls. <laughs> <laughs> Down low, two and one. Eagles would love to get a couple runners at the go to the top of the order. Here's the two one. High over his head, and that's three one. It's over his head, but they didn't miss his bat by much. That bat was up in the air. Coach Tutone's <laughs> going to walk out there. He's going to have a quick talk with his big right-hander. He don't want to get this thing to happen no. what happened to him because he saw the Eagles in two right. innings mm -hmm. really put it together for yeah. seven runs twice. Yeah, you talk about... You saw him duck, but he left his bat up in the air. Yes. Now, I saw one time, this is many, many, many years oh, you ago. you hit the bat and it goes to fair? No. I saw Jeff Bloom pitching. That's the, many years ago. As I said, many, many years ago. And we were doing a game at Allen's Cable, and I'm in the press box. The same batter struck out on six pitches. Two of the pitches were curveballs that didn't break behind him. But he ducked just like that, and they both hit the bat for a foul ball. So he struck out on six pitches. A third of them were behind him. And you never, I have never seen it twice to the same bat. I've right. seen it happen to yeah. that but, ball but fouled out of play. Twice in the same game to the same bat. And the same pitcher, of course, both of them with Jeff Bloom. 3-2 pitch. Fastball, strike call. Top play looks at strike three. Second strike out of the game for Mathern. And there's one out, and here comes Caleb O'Conn. That's baseball. You stick yeah. around, you'll see just about everything. Oh, there's it, it, just so many things that can happen in a baseball game. And, uh, and frequently, you're going to see something you've never seen before. First 
pitch to Ocon is a little low. 1-0. Oh. Ocon grounded out the shot to start the game. Wiggins with his lead from second. Here's the 1-0. Down low again, 2-0. Gregory Hamer is on deck. Top of the third, 4-0 Covenant Christian. One out for the Eagles, trying to get one across. Two O taken all the way. It's an FO strike. Two and one. Turn fires. Ocon squares pulls it back. Peel down there, and they say no swing. Three and one. Let me tell you, Ocon can can base hit bunt. He can drag bunt. He got a lot of speed, so. Be surprised if he tries it. Here's the 3 1. This is outside, and that's ball four. The Eagles now with two runners on for the first time tonight. Here comes Gregory Hamer. He struck out looking his first time up. And then you know, if you're Coach Joe Two Tone, you don't even want to have to make a decision to take the third out. No. After no. everybody they went through the other night, right. <laughs> he said, Big fella, it's your game, and go get it for us. I think that's what you have to go, go with who brought you. You're an easier race. That ball bounces in the other batter's box with a good stab by Richard. You know, we, I talked about Richard Thursday night, how many times he did what you just saw right here. He had to reach out into that left-handed batter's box and backhand balls and made the play. I don't remember it getting by him very many times, if at all. 1-0. Hamer out in front, fouls the third base way. <laughs> so one and one on the Eagles second baseman. SJ is on deck. Wiggins the runner at second, Ocon the runner at first. Mathern's pitch, Hamer check swing, and he went for it. Now it's one and two. That ball was low. Hammer couldn't hold back, and now it's one and two. Thurn looks at second. Now comes to the plate. Curve ball outside. Two and two. Wanted Hammer to chase that one, but he did a good job of laying off of it. Well, I think he needs to put it a little bit closer to the plate if he wanted to chase it. That one was so far outside. Another good job by uh, Richard behind the plate, making the stop. Especially with two runners on base. 2-2, two, two, ground ball to third. He'll field it. His only play is going to be first. Crossclair fires it over, and they get him. <laughs> runners move up. So now runners at second and third with two outs. And here comes Ty SJ with that double to right field his first time up. SJ stands in. He needs to help himself right here. First pitch right in there for a strike. 0-1. Oh, yeah. A solid single could score two runs right here, get him right back in this ball game. Here's the 0-1 delivery. Mm -hmm. Same spot, same result. Strike two. 0-2, and let's see if he goes with a curveball. If he knows SJ might be looking for it, he might come back with that fastball. Catcher sets up on the outside portion of the plate. That's a little too far outside. Yep. One and he, two. He got those first two in there. Not a bad pitch, though, with two strikes, 0-2 strikes, and two fastballs on that outside corner. Go off the plate just a little bit. Good job by SJ, though. Good discipline. Hitting. Another pitch outside, 2-2. Yep. Strong Burgess would yep. be next if SJ can keep the inning going. Nothing but fastballs to SJ, four of them. First two for strikes, second two outside. SJ calls timeout. Huh? 
2-2 pitch. Curveball down low, skips away from the catcher, but not far enough. Might have had a chance with a good jump, but I don't think he was ready. And he did the smart thing. Well, Stay back. And if you see a 3-2 pitch, the ball didn't get to the screen. Right. They all did the backstop, so Wiggins is looking at it, and now it's 3-2. Darns pitch is outside, and that's ball four. So the bases are loaded for Burgess. Burgess grounded back to the mound his first time up. He only saw one pitch. I think we'll have a courtesy runner at first for SJ. It's going to be Leapery, Jake Leapery, number two. We've had a bunch of first pitch swings today, but a pitcher like McClellan, you, you kind of want to, you know, certain hitters like that first pitch. Okay, if you do, go. But you'd like to see him work that pitch count up a little bit on a strong pitcher such as McClellan. And I think Burgess is one of those guys that like the first pitch because he swung at that one yeah. and fouled it back into the net. Yeah, he, he batted twice and he swung at the first pitch both times. So uh, he's not worried about that pitch count. I don't blame him. Hey, if you like him and he throws you a fastball, Go get it. Well, I think that's the key. Yeah. He's throwing fastballs early in the count. If you mm -hmm. get to two, then he might have a curve, then you got to adjust. Right. So you think up there, I'm hunting a fastball, mm -hmm. and if he gives it to me, I'm going to take a cut. Yeah. 1-1 one, one the count. Two outs. Base is loaded. Foul back off the arm mm -hmm. of Reshaw. Now got a big piece of the catcher. Yeah. He's holding that right arm. Coach comes out, he walks around, he just needs to rub it a little bit, he'll be okay. Uh, you gotta be some kind of tough to be a catcher. I never, oh, yeah. it's the one position on the field I never wanted to play. I always thought it was the best place out there to play. No. <laughs> well, it's just, everything's in front of you. You know, you you, you call in the pitch. But they're throwing it at you every yeah, pitch. I That's know, the thing oh, I don't yeah. like. Yeah, and it's that kind of stuff. But oh, uh, yeah. there's a reason why they call the equipment what they call it. Yes, you're exactly Two. right. Ah. Strike three, high fastball. He strikes out, and that retires the side. Eagles loaded him up in the third, but couldn't get anyone home. No runs. One hit. No errors. And they left him full. We head to the bottom of the third. Covenant Christian four, Central Catholic nothing. Okay, high school baseball on KWBJ Live is presented by Core Physical Therapy and Sports Performance. Here to restore the quality of life you deserve on Brashear Avenue in Morgan City. AJ Dome and Automotive Family at the foot of the Morgan City Bridge in Burry. The fourth annual Nicholas Bolner Foundation Part 3 Golf Tournament. Saturday, June the 11th at St. Mary Golf Club. Call 992 8943 for team or sponsorship information. The Pediatric Clinic on David Drive in Morgan City provides exceptional health care to children along with care that fosters their health and prepares them for the future. Our services include newborn care, adolescent medicine, vision and hearing call 385 or 384, excuse me, 2430 for your appointment today. See Dr. Menina or Dr. Ferguson. Also, A.J. Doman, Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Berwick now offers sold order protection, deep discounts on sold orders, and they're protecting that price until the vehicle comes in. They're also offering price protection on your trade-in. The value of your trade when you order your car will be the value you get when it comes in. That's A.J. Doman, Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Berwick. That's, that's, that's a big job right there by Matherne to get the strike out because you leave them mm -hmm. loaded, that's oh, yeah. a chance. Yeah. One hit, you get two runs. Yeah. That's the way you get a couple hits, you can get, you can tie mm -hmm. the thing up and you don't get that many opportunities and you look up at that board, he goes, only have four more chances. Right. It. That's it. The game's moving along. It's hard to believe. We're in the bottom of the third already. It's Hayden Scott leading off. He was hit by a pitch and scored back in the first. Ty SJ still on the mound for the Eagles. First pitch is high. Off power, warming up in the bullpen. Again, I think Anybody gets on, you could see the pitching change. Outside, 2 0. That 
pitch catches the corner, and it's two balls and a strike. Eagle defense playing pretty much straightaway baseball for Hayden Scott. Scott is the Lions' second baseman. That curveball misses, and it's three and one. Don't want to walk the leadoff hitter. Don't want to walk anybody, but especially, especially not the leadoff. Not the leadoff hitter. The ball tapped on the ground. O'Connell have to hurry. Fires it across and makes the out. So it's yeah. 63 on the put out. He did drop the ball, but it was taking it out yeah, the glove, and the umpire immediately made the signal. He was taking, which he obviously well, wasn't even close, but just the same. Here's Zach Dupree. He had that big two run single in the first to get the Lions started. As a strike called. That last play, too, was a good job by Ocon because he had to wait for that one. He hit the ground and bounced hops. up. Yeah. Had to wait for it and didn't have a lot of time once the ball got to him. It wasn't hit that hard. Hit into the ground, bounced high. But he stayed with it, made a good play. One and one, the count, one out, nobody on. The ball hit the third and Nini puts it away. Lined it right at him. Oh, yeah. And that's two away. Good job there by Nini too, because if he doesn't make that catch, it's gonna be extra bases. Here it's it just comes. a quick read. That's the reason why they call it a hot corner. That's right. Brennan Chapai. He hit it down to third. I should be in the first, and that was the play that the run scored. Burgess just had to touch the bag for the out. First pitch is high, ball one. Swing and a miss. Good SJ fastball that time, and it's one and one. You know, too, Seth, I've seen many times where pitcher might struggle a little bit. You start warming up somebody else, and all of a sudden they start pitching much better. <laughs> Swing and a miss, strike two. Yeah, because they don't want to come out the game. Yeah, they like it up there. You know, SJ, they, a senior, you know, he wants to keep his team in it, give him a chance to win it. And even though he would not come out of the game, he'd just come off the mound, but still he wants to finish that game on the mound. You know he does. One and two. That's the ball hit out to left field. Cordero drifting over to the line a little bit, and he makes the catch. So for the first time in the ball game, SJ gets the Lions down in order. No runs, no hits, no errors, no one left. We play three to score. Covenant Christian four, Central Catholic nothing. All right, high school baseball KWBJ Live is presented by Taco Bell in Morgan City and Bayou Vista open late night and delivery through DoorDash. Conrad Industries serving St. Mary Parish in the marine industry since 1948. GJCurbside.com, your complete online grocery store including local and regional products. Check our website for delivery options. Call our curb, from our curb to yours, G&J Curbside. And Allen's Communications, locally owned TV, cable, internet, and Telephone service call 384-8335. New car lots are still empty. Don't settle for the wrong vehicle at the wrong price. Let us build your exact vehicle with your name on the window sticker at AJ Doman Dealerships at the foot of the Morgan City Bridge in Burley. And State Senator Brett Alan, St. Mary Parish President David Hannegriff, and St. Mary Parish Assessor Jared Longman want to send a big shout out to the Central Catholic Eagles for staying the course this season. You guys have tremendous character and heart. Getting down to cases here. The Eagles, four more chances at it against Connor Mathern. And it'll be Brandon Cordero, Thomas Nini, Nicholas Spitali. Eagles have got two hits in the game, mm -hmm. both yeah. doubles. Yep, two doubles. Unfortunately, they both came with nobody on base. Right. Here's the first pitch to Cordero. Strike one call. And in their last at bat, it was a leadoff double. He managed to get to third, but that was as far as he was able to get. Here's the 0-1. I 
Hawks down low, one and one. One one delivery. Ball hit yep. in the right field for a base hit. Cordero reaches out and serves it out the right. And the Eagles have a runner on. Yeah, that pitch just up and uh, up and away a little bit. He just reached out and slapped it right over the second baseman's head. Good job by a Cordero, a leadoff single. Here comes Thomas Nini. He got a board on the base on ball. So again, the Eagles are putting runners on the bases. Got to get them around. It's Nini all the way to the backstop, and he just airmailed it. Cordero goes to second easily, and it's one and zero. Oh. But one thing I liked about Cordero, he made it there easily, but he didn't jog down there. Okay, he took off like he was in a sprint and got there quickly, stood up, made it easy. It was easy, but he made it easy. Check swing, they said he went around, and it's one and one. Would have been a ball. stayed low and it's two and one. Catcher overthrows the pitcher, but backed up by the shortstop. Two and one to count. So Darrell is lead from second. Swing and a miss by Nini and a good fastball and it's two and two. Nicholas Vitale awaits on deck. But that was a real good heater, kind of up and away from, from the hitter. And Nini, he tried to catch up to it, but just couldn't. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. That ball hit in the air down the right field line. Champagne going over by the fence. And he makes the catch. There's one away. Spitali. Let me tell you too, Aaron. You can only go to that well so many times. Yep. You can get them chances, and when you start not being able to get them in, it starts really working on you. Yeah, it, it becomes the later a, it goes. Right, and it, it's a mental thing for both teams. It gives confidence to one and takes it away from the other. Runner at second, one out. A burn out of the stretch. Foul first base way into the parking lot. Pitch down low, one and one. Ethan Wiggins on deck. He's got one of the two doubles. That fastball just ticked foul back into the screen. One ball and two strikes on Spitali. to the short stop. Rogers will field it on the first for the out. Cordero moves to third, but two outs. Now it's going to take a two out hit to score a run or a wild pitch. We'll take it any way we can get yeah, it right way. now. Yeah, run is a run. Here's Wiggins. He doubled to right his first time up. He hit it over the right fielder's head. Wiggins fouls it down the first base side. First base coach Mitchell Lemoyne knocks it down. He's an old first baseman. He yeah. doesn't know a little something about being out there. Got down there with two hands, ball right between him. Wiggins fouls it out of play. Strike out, Ethan. Strike out, Ethan. Oh, 
and one. Here's the 0-2. Fastball stayed alive as he got a piece of it. Two. Oh and two with two outs. One runner on third. Fouled it back again. Staying alive. Oh, getting a back. piece of it. Staying alive. So that bat by Wiggins. Tom plays on deck. Two outs for Darrow down at third. Eagles trail it four to nothing, top of four. Wiggins to center field, right oh, at the center man. fielder. Had him played perfectly. He was playing him slightly to the right field side. It, uh, Wiggins hits a nice line drive, but he hit it right where he was playing him for the third out. Before the Eagles in the fourth, no runs, one hit, no errors, and they left the runner at third. Three and a half in the books, score still. Covenant Christian four, Central Catholic nothing. All right, folks, high school baseball on KWBJ Live is presented by Core Physical Therapy and Sports Performance, here to restore the quality of life you deserve on Brashier Avenue in Morgan City. A.J. Doman Automotive Family at the foot of the Morgan City Bridge in Bury. The fourth annual Nicholas Boner Foundation Part 3 Golf Tournament, Saturday, June the 11th at St. Mary Golf Club. Call 992 Eight nine four three for team or sponsorship information. Feast on the new White Hot Ranch Nacho Fries day after day at Taco Bell. Grilled steak loaded on seasoned fries topped with warm nacho cheese sauce and a new White Hot Ranch. DoorDash now available Taco Bell in Morgan City and Bayou Vista. And the Pediatric Clinic on David Drive in Morgan City provides exceptional health care to children along with care that fosters their health and prepares them for the future. Our services include newborn care, adolescent medicine, vision, and hearing. Call 985-384-2430 for your appointment today. Bottom of the fourth, it'll be 789, Hebert, Reshaw, and Rogers against Ty SJ. About to get up three in the first, gave up one in the second. Got him down in order next inning, so let's see if he can keep that trend going. A bear. He got on the base on balls and was caught stealing there in the first inning. As the ball lifted to left field, pretty well hit. Cordero going back, looks up. That ball is out of here. Wow. A solo home run for Carson A bear. As he just takes the first pitch and drives it over the left field wall. It didn't seem like the ball was hit that well when he first hit it. And I look back out there, and left fielder's running hard and then stops when he gets to the fence and watches it goes over, go over for a leadoff home run. So 5 nothing. And now to bring up John Richard, who grounded out the short. Mm -hmm. Curve ball bounces up there and it's ball one. Not sure how much further you're going to go with SJ here. Yeah. Well, a lot of that's going to depend on how you feel about whoever's going to come in. You know. One and one. Do you think they might see Menina? Did he pitch too much? I think he pitched too, too much. That's why I think yeah. they got Hall Power warm. Oh, he number. came in relief and yeah. has a swing and a miss. Hopefully, SJ can get out of it. He just, you know, he had a long first inning. Now he's pitched, you know, into the fourth mm -hmm. here. So. 
say, he hadn't had anything even close to what happened in the first inning. He faced seven hitters there. He had four in the second and only three in the third. So I don't know exactly how many pitches he threw, but he didn't face a lot of batters. That curveball was fouled back. Curveball. That ball hit the center field. Wiggins comes up and makes the catch. And there's one away. So it'll be Tristan Rogers, the shortstop, coming on. He got a board on an error. And scored. Got balked to second, and then he scored with that two out Mathern single. First pitch, strike one. SJ wasted no time. He's getting it, throwing it. And your fielders love that. Okay, fielders don't like pitches that got to think about it for a while. They get up, throw, get up, throw, keep them on their toes. One and one to count. That went above his head, and it's two and one. And the ball's getting thrown all over the place here. One out, nobody on, two one. It's a five nothing lead, a home run by A Bear to start the inning. Third ball now, three and one. Pitches pitch is down low, ball four, and that might be the night for SJ. Coach Hidalgo now will come out to the mound. Yep. And you can see him bringing SJ's other glove, which would be the center fielder glove. So I believe that's going to be all for mm -hmm. Ty SJ, the senior. That way they'll change it. Bodie Hoffpower will come to the mound. SJ will go to center. Wiggins will move over to right. Tom Play will come in. So technically, it'll be Hall Power in the game for Tom Play. So we'll change all that book work. Yeah. <laughs> I, had to, I had the paper with the scores and I. Somehow, I lost it in the book. Where a lot of times, well, we're outside, which it's a chore just to <laughs> keep our papers in one place, especially Thursday night. <laughs> There's a little small piece I had, and I said, well, I can stick it right here, and I won't lose it. And sure enough. What score are you looking well, for? Well, I was just going to uh, remind everyone that the Berwick Panthers had moved on. They'll play mm -hmm. Sterlington at 10 o'clock uh, over in Sulphur on Thursday. And also the other semifinal will be Lutcher against Iota. Mm -hmm. So one, two, three, yeah. and four, the seeds held up in that one. Yeah, well, Berwick Bur plays uh, Thursday at 10 a.m. against Sterlington. And Those then the two champ, teams they, have yeah. played in the semifinals. They right. played in the finals. They are very familiar with each other the last few years. And the championship game will be Saturday, May 14th at 2 p.m. And in this division, the winner of this game will go to Calvary Baptist for the semifinals. And... On the bottom half of the bracket, Washtenaw Christian will take on St. Fred. So neither team got to travel for They both in Monroe. As St. Fred comes back to win two from Ascension Catholic today. The one and two out of the Division Four yeah, that, that bracket. St. Frederick, that, that's, this is the, the surprise of the day. So here's Peyton Trostler at the third baseman. He singled and struck out. Runners at first with one out. All power on the mound. Squares the bunt, bunts it down third, but it'll be foul. All power came in and done an exceptional job the other night mm -hmm. in relief of Menina. You see what Mathern coming up, even with one out, they try to hit that runner out there so he can bring him home. Cross player, good hitter. They're willing to. Curveball oh, in that first strike. That was a pretty curveball. 
had a lot of movement about 15 feet in front of the plate, man. Maybe a little bit further than that. My depth perception is not what it <laughs> used to be. But it just had that big hook on it and just broke right over the middle of the plate. It was a beauty. Here's the 0-2. Curveball he lays off of that one. One ball and two strikes. Abair is signaling for his infielders to come in, get come in. He did that prior, just prior to the last pitch and then like, some more afterwards. Runner gets his lead from first. How far was one, two? Ball hit on the ground. Meany's only play will be first base, but he throws it high, but they tag him out. No, he tag him. It was a high throw. He looked oh, yeah. like he, well, I'll tell you what, he didn't dive. He kind of leaned, and yeah. I thought it was awfully close to being a tag, but. He didn't protest. Nope. Yeah. I'll tell you, you know what happens in those situations, exactly what happened. Coach Dabba looked at the home plate umpire, because that's who he had to go to, and he shook his head no, so that means, mm -hmm. you know, don't even come out. Yeah. And he didn't. So now first and second, one out with Mathern up at the plate. There's a ball ripped to left field. Cordero going back, and that's off the wall. One runner's in. They'll hold the runner at third. Mathern with another all the eyes single. That's a long single. I'm surprised that's he only got one out of that. His second hit, he's two for two, and there goes the courtesy runner. Well, he got out there looking for a pitch he could hit on the first pitch, and he got it. Here comes two tone. Six nothing, and now you get into that area where <laughs> that 10 run rule starts coming into effect. Yeah. You can't get them out. That's the first thing I thought when I saw that ball bounce off the wall. So, first and third, one out. Here's two tone looking for his first hit of the day. Yeah, first and third, and this is a three hole hitter right here, so you got the meat of this lineup he's got to go through. Six stayed upstairs, one and oh. That's a good looking pitch. I thought he might have got that one. Oh, Paula looks in. Pitch inside corner for a strike, one and one. Two tones just right on that inside part of the plate. So anything inside looks like it's yeah. inside, but it's a strike. Yeah, he, well, he like I said, he, and he, he's got this. You look at him on the on the batter's box line. His his toes are right up against that line. Pitch down low. The runner goes to second. Here comes the runner from third on the pass ball, and he dives in safely. Ball got by Fontenot. The runner scores. Now runner at second with one out, and it's seven nothing. Two and one is the count on two tone. Wheels kind of coming off a little bit for the Eagles here. That's a base hit. They're sending the runner. Here comes the throw to Cordero. Bounced in, but Fontenot can't make the tag. Is this up the line? And it's eight to nothing. So two tone with an RBI. Still just one out. And now we have a pinch runner at first base. Yeah, you can see he's still favoring that leg quite a bit as you can see him jogging back to the dugout. And pretty much jogged down that first base line. So, so eight to nothing. They've gotten four here in the fourth. Still just one out. Yeah, the, the coaches say, <laughs> right now we're gonna, we're gonna use that pinch runner. Yeah. <clears throat> You know, we're, we're in the fourth inning here, and you have to We don't eight. want nothing yeah. to happen to him on them bases. Well, we're not going to happen to him as well as we want some more speed because now he's thinking, you know he's thinking, I want to get out of here in five. Oh, no question. Yeah, I mean, that's what he's thinking, and, and the Eagles coaching staff is thinking, we want to extend this game, you know. But, um, 
so you, you want that speed out there. Here's Hayden Scott. First pitch, curveball, strike. Well, you know, it Coach Tutons thinking too, and Coach Hidalgo, last night the Eagles put seven on the board in two innings. Right. So you know, that's what he's thinking over there. We want to, hey, let's get a couple more in this inning and go hold them and let's go home. Yeah. Here's the 0 1 from Hawk Power. Fastball cranks down the line and left a foul. Way well, out in front of that Hawk Power fastball. The difference between the then and now, the two seven inning, seven run innings. Well, Mathern wasn't on the mound. Mathern wasn't the guy on <laughs> <Exactly>. the mound. <laughs> you know? Exactly. Yeah. He's been hard to, uh, to score off of. They got yeah, a couple hits on. Right. Yeah. They've hit the ball, and he's, he's allowed some walks, but the scoring mm -hmm. is what's the object of the yeah. game. And they don't count the hits. They count the runs. This off power is 0-2. Curve ball. Hit in the left field. That's a base hit. Right now, it's just yeah. a little hit parade going on. That's three straight hits. Four in the inning. Yep. And a walk. And an error. And an error. Exactly. Well, here comes well, Coach A. Barrow will be out there. He'll probably just talking to his young pitcher. And I'm sure he's telling, look, just keep on pitching. Yeah. You know, at this point, that's what you got to do. That's all you can do. And you got to throw strikes because they can be choosing. I'm going to be honest with you. After the first game mm -hmm. yesterday, I hadn't seen Covenant this year. We both were awfully impressed. Oh, yeah. Just the way they played the game. A little uncharacteristic that second game because they kind of lost their composure a little bit. Yeah. Also, a lot of teams in, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. Class 1A doesn't have, you know, four or five pitchers deep. No. So you got to that second line pitch, and they struggled a little bit, but they struggled in the field. They made some mistakes. Mm -hmm. But today, they right. have come out, and, and they played well. What? They had a 10-run a, a rule in the first game. They had just hung six to go up, what, nine to three, three. And, it, and they relaxed. They said, this is over. Started making travel plans for next week. And, and they came back and lost that ball game. Yeah, exactly. And then once it gets away from you, it's it, it, there's not a little switch over there. You just reach over and flip it, and everything goes back the way it was. It, it's hard, hard, hard to get it back. And uh, it, it cost them a game, and it's why we get in the play tonight, though. 0-1 oh, the count. Good, good curveball by Hoffauer. Got hit a dupe. There's a ball hit in the left field again. They're going to wave yeah. the runner again. Oh, now oh, they'll put on the brakes. And he'll stop yeah. now. The base <laughs> is loaded. Fourth straight single. And they've all went to the same place, right to Cordero. And here is Champagne. He's the ninth batter of the order. He steps in. And now the infield come in. You have no choice. Yep. Out of the windup. First pitch is outside. Ball one. Nowhere to put him. Yeah, you have all four infielders playing up on the grass. So it plays at home. Side two and zero. Oh. What year is, is uh, the pitcher? He's a sophomore. sophomore. Two and zero. Oh. Inside corner strike one. And a valuable experience. You oh, get yeah. this kind of game in this atmosphere. This, this, you know, next this, time you go to the mound next you, year, it's going to be like, well, I've been you, here. You can't teach this. You, you can't buy this kind of experience for, for the, all the guys that are coming back next year. You know, you're playing in the quarterfinals. And like I said, for a young sophomore, this is really sets him up for next year. Ball fouled off. Now, if you look in the field right now, S.J. and Burgess are the only guys you're, le you're losing. Two-two. 
Curveball, swing and a miss, strike three. Big pitch by Hoffauer for the second out. And now it'll be Hebert who started this with the solo home run. That's, a, that's the second out, but it's the ninth hitter of this, this inning. Out of stretch. First pitch down low, good block by Fontenot. Yeah, Abair's home run, well hit ball got out, but when it came off the bat, I did not think that ball was going to get out of here. I just kind of watched for it. Just kept for, yeah, that, and I, he kind of kept he, drifting back, mm -hmm. and then finally, like, I ain't going to catch it. I was surprised to see him running that far back and then uh, and went over the fence. So Here's the 1 0. Outside. And tonight, we, tonight we can't blame no, it on the no, wind. No. Like, like you know, Thursday night the wind was blowing out of right left field rather strong. This was not wind aided. <laughs> he hit this one. Bases full, two outs, two and zero, oh, nowhere to put him. All power needs to get it over the plate. That pitch is inside, three and zero. Oh. Swinging here. Be very surprised. Was it? And it's mm -hmm. a strike. I said ABL did hit a home run, but he is also the seventh hole hitter. Yeah. Three and one. Want to get that lead off each base. Powers pitch. Strike call. Looks like Abair was taken again. Now it's full. The runners will get the oh, yeah. jump start as uh, they'll be going with the pitch. The merry go round starts. You got a full count and two outs, and the base is loaded. And watch, we're going to get a foul ball on that. And it seems to always happen. Yeah. Everybody the, goes the, back. That first pitch, full count. And anytime it's that first pitch, full count. It seems like 70, 80 percent of them are fouled off. You know. Hey, Bear. Unless it's a really bad pitch. You know. uh, <laughs> Call timeout. Now he's back in the box. Off hours pitch. On the ground to third. Yeah. Nini will field it. His only place will be first. Winds up, fires it across, and he got him. And he got him out. Yeah, first the base coach agree. didn't think so. Yeah. But with the runners gone, Nene had no chance to touch the base because the runner was already there. He got there in a hurry. I, know, I was surprised because that ball it, it wasn't hit real hard, but it wasn't a slow roller either. And by the time he came up with the ball, the runner was there. So he made the right decision. Four runs, five hits, an error, and they left the bases loaded. We go to the top of the fifth, eight nothing, Covenant Christian. All right, folks, High School Baseball on KWBJ Live is presented by Taco Bell in Morgan City and Bayou Vista. Open late night delivery through DoorDash. Conrad Industries serving St. Mary Parish in the marine industry since 1948. GJCurbside.com, your complete online grocery store, including local and regional products. Check our website for delivery options from our curb to yours G and J curbside and Allen's Communications locally owned TV, cable, internet, and telephone service. Call 384-8335. State Senator Brett Allen, St. Mary Parish President David Hennegriff, and St. Mary Parish Assessor Jared Lohman want to send a big shout out to the Central Catholic Eagles for staying the course this season. You guys have had a tremendous character and heart. And everyone at Conrad Shipyards, Hallamar Shipyards, and Vita Paint, they keep going, Eagles, and don't look back. Also, Morgan City Mayor Lee Dragner and Morgan City Councilman Louis Tamparella tip their hats to the Eagles. Stay focused, guys. You've got determination. Well, there we go to the fifth. Yep. And now the Eagles trail it eight to nothing. It's going to be Hawk Power, Ocon, and Hamer.
you know, all this talking about Taco Bell the other night and all these uh, commercials we've been reading for. We got back to town about 10 o'clock, and uh, guess where I got my supper that night? That's stuff by Taco, Taco Bell. Taco Bell is not a bad place yeah. to get any any time of day. It's 10 o'clock at night. Of course, I was out, so I just went to the drive-up window. Service was good. Food was great. First pitch is high to Hall Power, and here comes Coach Two-Tone. Again, not waiting. Saturday night here in Homa, Southland Field. Said it before. We'll say it one more time. We don't want to forget our moms on this Absolutely. Mother's Day Saturday. Tomorrow is Mother's Day, so make sure you let her know how much you appreciate her. Yeah. Yeah. Eagles got to get on and got to get. You know, you said it the mm -hmm. other day. You can't hit eight-run home runs. Right. You got to get some runners on somehow, some way. He's got to go out there and play baseball, man. You, you can't look at it as we're down eight. Just go out there and back. Get a base hit. Get on base. Run the bases. Play baseball. 2-0. Oh. High 3-0. And, oh. and, you know, we talked about SJ. Even though Mathern wasn't really tested in those two innings, he mm -hmm. still threw two innings right. two days ago. So mm -hmm. now, you know, now this is seventh inning of work. Right. And your arm, yeah. your arm, you know. Yarm, yarm, so he yarm. might be getting a little tired. Usually, a tired pitcher throws high. And starting it. here in the fifth inning, he had some high pitches. Now this one's low. And that's four that's pitch a, walk. A four pitch walk, exactly. And they'll probably get a courtesy runner out. It looks like it might be Thomas. Nope, that's Lee Free. He was, he was out there at first, so Lee Free uh, takes over at first, and here's O'Conn. O'Conn's lined out and walked. The high ball one, five straight mm -hmm. balls. Most people think it's your arm that gets tired as a like pitcher. Legs, it's, it's your legs that's going to go first. Now, he did have a 48-hour break between those two games. And he's a high school senior, so I'm sure he went to bed every night the last yeah. couple of nights. You know. Time called, and they switch helmets over at first base. High school senior in the month of May. Not yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 1-0 to count. Runner at first. No outs. Top of five. Eight nothing Covenant. Inside. O'Conn. 2-0. That's six straight. Brain trust over there talking if you're covenant Christian. Coach mm -hmm. Tuton and his staff wondering what we're going to do if we do have to go get him now. They'll probably let him try to work himself out of it, but. He so saw returns behind the plate. 2 0 on O'Connor. Here's the third pitch. Outside, ball three. Three and Down low, that's, that's two straight walks, yeah. and Eagles in business. They have runners at first and second. Here comes Gregory Hamer. I'm surprised they're not going out to talk to him. Looks like he's thinking well, about it. Well, if he goes this time, he's got to take him out. He went already, already once. The first inning? In, in first pitch in? of this inning, he ran oh. and he went out there. Yeah. I mean, yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. First pitch to. Okay, so now you can't go. Okay, no. I missed yeah. First pitch yeah. to Hamer strike. Hamer stands back in. Here's the 0-1. Foul tip. 
double two. On Hamer, SJ is on deck. The Eagles have been here tonight. They had them loaded, couldn't get anybody home now. First and second, no outs. Curveball hit on the ground. Back to Mathern. His only play will be first. And he'll make it. Runners will move up. He'll go one to three on the put out. But you know, he. He walks two hitters on eight pitches, and he follows that with three strikes yeah, I, to the next hitter. <laughs> and here comes SJ, doubled and walked. So he's going on base both times. Which is high, ball one. It looks ball like he's still no got strikes. good velocity. Oh, yeah. yeah, he's still throwing hard. It's just his location. It's getting a, a little bit out of whack. SJ fouls it out of play. Ty stands back in. Ty. Two and one. You just need to scratch across a couple of three runs here. You got to see that yeah. zero go off the board. That's yeah. what I'm, I mean, you always do. Mm -hmm. But they get the bases loaded with one out. SJ fouls it off. Two, two. Strikes. Straight Burgess awaits on deck. Runs at second and third, one out. Outside. Ball gets by the catcher. Here comes a runner. He dives in and he's safe. Good slide, good run. He was ready. He was on his toes and ready to go. He made the move on time. Ball didn't get that far away, but a good jump by yep. Leafrey, the courtesy runner. And he's able to slide in there safely. That takes the double playoff as well. Full count, runner at third. Eight to one. Well, they didn't really have a double play. They didn't have anybody yeah. on first. So. <laughs> I was thinking we still had bases loaded, which we did not. Full count. Here's McLaren's pitch. Fastball foul back. Good job by SJ to stay alive. Well, it was close. That may have been ball four. That's but too I close tell you, to take. I'd rather see you swing at ball four uh, than but, take strike three. That, was, that, that was, was the right play all the way around. And he did a good job of getting a piece of it, staying alive. They all pitch. SJ pops it up. Second baseman calls for it. And he makes the catch. And there's two away. Burgess. Burgess line, oh, excuse me, grounded back to the pitcher and struck out. There's the third pitch. Down low, ball one. O'Conn, the runner at third. Working out of the stretch. Oh, pitch is high, 2 0. That is the 2 0. Fastball foul back, 2 and 1. My question, too, is. You know, you get out of this inning, I know it's eight to one. Mm -hmm. You probably send him out for the six, but you know, if you yeah. coach two tone, you gotta start thinking. Yeah. I might have to change. Yeah, I, I think you're gonna ride him as long as you can, though. You know, it looked like he was 
Might have trouble here. And, you know, he will give up a run or two. Three and one but, outside. But if you can, I think you want to ride him to the end as long as he hangs in there. Now, we have no idea how many pitches he's thrown. You know, we're in the fifth inning, top of the fifth inning. And he's thrown a bunch, but. Swing and a miss, strike two. Three balls, two strikes. And you do have a pitch count, so they're looking. Yeah. If you can get to the pitch count, maybe that's what mm -hmm. they're gonna figure, then we'll have no choice, but the Eagles would love to see anybody but Mathern on that mound. Here's a 3-2. Burgess pops it a mile high toward the Covenant dugout. Third baseman taking a look, but it'll go on top of the dugout. But we'll do the full count pitch again. That's one right there, Seth, where you talked about earlier how the, the bench kind of comes in a little bit because a little bit closer to where we are, that'll in fair oh, yeah. territory. Yeah, that, that, not fair territory, but in play. And they could have made that catch. But uh, when that dugout comes out a little bit, it just reached the, the roof of the dugout. Outside, that's ball four. Mm -hmm. So the Eagles now have runners on the corners for Brandon Cordero. He's got a hit in two trips. So Cordero. Mm -hmm. Trying to get the run home. O'Connor at third. Burgess over at first. Hi. Bye, everybody. O'Connor's going to score, and the runner's going to move to second. He just airmailed that one. Yep. That's, uh, and you see, he's missing a lot up high. Here, here comes your coach, two times. Yeah. They see him yeah. shaking his arm, too. Yeah. Eight to two, mm. and we're gonna have a pitching change. The other night, I if I still got the. It was Evan Duplantis, a lefty that came in, and it looks like that's who it's gonna be again. Evan Duplantis, I think the theory here is mm -hmm. get a hard thrower like Mathern. Now you come in with a soft throw and curveball lefty. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. But he's a youngster, so yeah. you never know in this situation. You got Cordero yeah. and Nini. You got to run out of second. You've got two in. And you know what else? Can't help but think everybody over there in white and everybody in the stands from Covenant remembers they had that comfortable lead and all of a sudden Central Cali not only scored seven in the four, but seven in the six. Right. So, you know, just like that first inning when they were getting three runs and we were probably thinking, here we go again. Yeah. <laughs> well, I got to believe that's what they're thinking right now. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. They, they always, in my theory of this, Aaron, yeah. I like to score runs. I always like to cut the lead in half if I could. Yeah. I, I felt good if I, got, I went out there, it was eight nothing if I got four. Got four. I mean, yeah. I mean obviously, you'd like to get as many as you can, but. Right. And well, if I'm on defense, mm -hmm. I always felt if I didn't let them get where a grand slam will tie, it'll right. beat me. Mm -hmm. I always felt better because you never yeah. know. Yeah. That yeah. was my thing. Yeah. Coaching and playing, I just. We have four I runs wanted, I wanted the to get five. Number. I, wanted, I wanted to stay five ahead. Yeah, that, that you, couldn't, you couldn't mm -hmm. lose it with one or get it tied with one swing. But Mathern's going to mm -hmm. move over to first. Uh, I didn't see. I think I think Champagne mm -hmm. might have been out of the game because I see everybody else is still in their regular defensive positions. So I do believe Duplantis probably is coming for Champagne. So here's Cordero. He inherits, well, Duplantis inherits a 1-0 count. He'll go to work. And now he'll step back, look at second. Here's the 1-0. Fastball strike, and I use that term. <laughs> yeah. I, compared to, I'd hate to follow Mathern if you if you look at some velocity, because here's the 1-1. One, one. Another ball, this ball ripped to left field. Left fielder coming over, center fielder coming over, and they make the catch. Well, the center 
fielder made the catch. That was Abair Cordero. Had a good piece of it, yeah. but he lines out for the Eagles in the fifth. Two runs on no hits. There was no errors, and they left two on. So we head to the bottom of the fifth, 8-2. Governor Christian on top. And high school baseball on KWBJ Live is presented by Core Physical Therapy and Sports Performance here to restore the quality of life you deserve on Fresh Air Avenue in Morgan City. A.J. Doman Automotive Family at the foot of the Morgan City Bridge in Bury. The fourth annual Nicholas Bogner Foundation Par 3 Golf Tournament, Saturday, June the 11th at St. Mary Golf Club. Call 992-894314 or sponsorship information. Bad credit, slow credit, no credit, new credit, bankruptcy, repossession, or foreclosure. Whatever your situation is, call at A.J. Doman Chevrolet is ready to help you. Visit A.J. Doman Chevrolet in Berwick, 800 Robinson Street, or call Harley at A.J. Doman Chevrolet, 985-221-4139. Chopin was actually in left field, so I think what they did, they might have took Fitch out, and what happens is Two-Tone just becomes the D.H., I believe, oh. for the planet. Did he go to right field? I thought I saw Zach Dupree go back out there in right field. He was right. Left. Sean Fine, 22, oh, was in left. Oh, left. left the left, left hander was out there. I yeah. saw him running in. So that's what I'm saying. So Fitch was getting DH for. Well, they put the plans in for Fitch, so mm -hmm. two-tone stays at DH. Right. Okay. Here is John Reshaw, the catcher. He's grounded out and flew out. Cody Hall follows first pitch of the strike. Bottom of the fifth. 8-2, Covenant Christian. All power looks in. Curveball hit out the right field. That's going to be trouble. That's going to be in yep. there. Wiggins will field it. He'll just get it in and reach hard with a base hit. Lead off the eighth. And here comes Tristan Rogers, the shortstop. Rogers got a board on error and walked, scored both times. Squares the bunt early. Pitch, he does bunt it. Mm -hmm. Nini at third, he'll field it on the run. Throws to Burgess, who does a good job of coming off the base, catching it, or keeping his foot on the base, I should say. Sacrifice works, and they move him over to second. So one out, runner at second, and he was back to the top of the order in Trostler. He's one for three. Can't allow no more runs, you know. Yeah, well, yeah, that's you the thing. You got to battle to get eight, right. but, but you want to get eight, not have to hit ten or eleven, and twelve would end the game. That's Ooh, hit him. him in the back. Off our curveball hits him in the back. So now runners at first and second. Yeah, we've gone a few innings without a hit batter. Yeah, well, that's as many as we've been in the last, you know, this game and the previous two. Connor Mathern. He's done some damage today again. Two hits and a hit by pitch. He's knocked in a couple. Down low, ball one. First and second of the runners, one out. Burgess will play behind the runner, won't hold him on. Powers 1 0. That ball hit out to short. O'Connell take the play at third. It was right in front of him. He was moving to his left and 
Fielder's choice to cut down the runner at second for the second out. So now runners at first and second. And here's Tutong. Tutong delivered that base hit last time. Nice curveball right there, broke in and down in the strike zone. Right where you'd like that curveball to be. Looks like it's going to stay outside for ball one, and it breaks, catches that outside corner. No balls in the strike, two outs. Down low, one and one. Bottom of the fifth, eight two, covering it on top. Winner moves on to the semifinals in Division Four. Off power is 1 1. Curveball. Fontenot kept it out in front of him, but the runs have still advanced. Well, he blocked it, but it yeah. got far enough away. Everybody moves up. So now, second and third. walking so they choose to put him on well he is a three hole hitter oh, he's no a good doubt. hitter oh, yeah. and secondly just puts the force on everywhere so Aiden Scott. could help him well on a ground you know, ball you never see no like, like see nobody hurt but the fact of the matter is mm -hmm. if you hit a ground ball in the infield you go to you can go to second because right. he's he's gonna jog down there because he's hurt he's I mean. hurt yeah we, we've already established that he, he, he's got that bad hamstring what it does if Scott knocks this one out the park, oh, you yeah, go home. Yeah, that's it. This is the ball game. You know, you bring the winning run to the plate. On fire yeah. with the bases loaded. Yep. Swing and a miss. And you got to believe he, he bats in the cleanup spot uh -huh. for a reason. Yes. Yep. Oh, one one to count on Scott. Two outs, bases loaded. All fouls, 0-1. Curveball, yeah. right call. Pretty curveball. He's got a pretty sweet curveball. I can tell you that. <laughs> that right-handed curveball, it's got a big break and down, breaks down and in, or down and away from a right-handed hitter. All power looking to get out the inning. Here's the 0-2. Curveball. Boy, he thought about it, but laid off of it. Yep. That one broke. That one started out on the outside portion <laughs> of the plate and further. then broke out of the strike zone, which is exactly what you want on what a two-strike pitch. Try to get him to chase a bad pitch. Oh, one and two now. Stretch. Curveball yeah, strike three call. Well, they did their job. Popar puts it on the inside corner. Scott goes down. Four coming at Christian in the fifth. No runs. It was one hit, no errors, and they left the bases full. We head to the six. Covenant eight. Central Catholic two. Okay, folks, high school baseball on KWBJ Live is presented by Taco Bell in Morgan City and by Uvista. Open late night. Delivery through DoorDash. Conrad Industries serving Seminary Parish and Marine Industry since 1948. KGCurbside.com, your complete online grocery store, including local and regional products. Check our website for daily delivery options. From our curb to yours, G and J curbside. And Allen's Communications, locally on TV, cable, internet, and telephone service. Call 384-8335. Feast on new White Hot Ranch nacho fries day after day at Taco Bell. Grilled steak loaded on seasoned fries topped with warm nacho cheese sauce 
and the new White Hot Ranch. DoorDash available now. Taco Bell in Morgan City and Bayou Vista. And everyone at Conrad Shipyards, Hallamar Shipyards, and Vita Paint. They keep going, Eagles, and don't look back. Also, Morgan City Mayor Lee Dragna and Morgan City Councilman Louis Camparella tip their hats to the Eagles. Stay focused, guys, and you've got determination. Nini's, Batali, and Wiggins to face Duplantis, who is in the game now. Eagles need another big inning here in the sixth. Yeah, they scored their first two in the previous at bat. They need a few more, though, here. Nini, 0 for 1 with a walk. Pitch by call. Oh one. Curveball bounces from the plate. One ball and one strike. Planet's not wasting time. That curveball's in for a strike. It's one and one. Oh, one and two, excuse me. Not throwing it hard, but he's, he's hitting his spots. He, he did that a couple of nights ago. He's doing it again tonight. One, two, down low, two and two. The ball just runs out of gas uh, before it yeah. gets to the plate. <laughs> it just didn't reach the plate. Yeah. It was a nice curveball. He just didn't reach the plate. Two, two. Curveball outside. Counts full. It curved around the plate. Yeah. Three two pitch. Nini hits it to right field and the right fielder right there to make the catch. So one away, and that'll bring up Nicholas Spitali. Spitali over two. Spitali fouls it into the parking lot. patient on him. Can't get overly aggressive, that's for sure. No, you have to wait on the ball. Down low, three and one. Not throwing hard, so you got to wait on it. Three, one. Down low, and that's ball four. four. Here comes Ethan Wiggins. Doubled and lined out. Pinch run over at first base. I think that's Andrew Cavalier, number 15, who will be the pinch runner for the DH Patale. First pitch is out of play. Balls and one strike. Wiggins fouls that one out of play, and so too. Lions defense is set up to play straightaway baseball, except your center fielder way over on the right side. High, one ball, two strikes. They don't have a pitcher throwing very hard. But their the outfielders are playing shading, where well the center fielder and right fielder have them shaded way to the right side because he hits it to third. And it and throws, it in, the right throws field. it in the right field. That's an error. And that'll allow 
Cavalier to get down to third. Now on the corner with one out. That kind of looked like a catchable ball over there, huh? I thought, I thought so too. I didn't think it, it was a terrible throw. It's, it's hard to tell exactly, but uh, I think I'd almost have to give that error to the second baseman. I think you got to, too. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, again, that drive is goes too tough. He just wants an out in that right. situation. Yeah. They were trying to hurry up and turn the double play, but mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you, that's how this stuff starts. That's, that's exactly how it starts. Yep. Or on the third base, or excuse me, on the second base, we're going to give it to on the catch. So we got runners at first and third. Bodie Hoffpower is up. He walked last time. That's one out. Second base has got low. You got to catch it before you can throw it. And I think he just got ahead of himself a little bit right there. Out of the stretch. Hoffauer on the ground into left field. That's going to be a base hit. hit. Runs going to score. Cody Hoffauer, first pitch swinging. And it's a 3 game. Here comes the Eagles. One out back to the top of the order. And Caleb O'Conn. Eagle fans on their feet. Playing us a stretch. Pitch to Khan. Ball outside. Ball one. That's a pretty good pitch. Now time yeah. out. Then we'll have a courtesy runner for the pitcher at first base. It'll be Lee Pree again. For the pitcher Hall Power. 1-0 to Ocon. High 2-0. Those weren't two bad pitches, both of those pitches. I Not thought we were pretty darn close. Yeah. But now you'll hear the Covenant fans kind of, well, and O'Connor takes a swing at it, 2-0. and Hey, you got to be aggressive on the play. Mm -hmm. You just don't throw that hard. Yeah. You can't get behind. You, you get a few pitches. You got to the Eagles can hit it. Yeah. I mean, they're not going to walk your way to seven runs. No. O'Connor mm -hmm. takes it down low, 3-1. and one. One pitch away from loading them up for Gregory Hamer. And that's in there for a strike. Three and two. Three balls, two strikes. Duplantis looks in. Ball tapped over the mound. This will be play. Trouble. Everybody safe. Yep. Infield yeah. single for Caleb O'Conn. Talk about hitting it in the right spot, but that's hitting the ball in the right spot right there. And the bases are loaded for Gregory Hamer. Eight to three game, one out. But that right there is going to look like a line drive in the paper tomorrow. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Hamer pops it up for the dugout. Richard giving chase. He almost goes over the wall, but he... Ran out of room. He didn't catch it, but it wasn't because of lack of effort. No. That's for sure. Because he, he hit that wall pretty hard. 0-1. Oh I hope he used them, uh, them big old knee pads to uh, kind of soften that blow. Base is loaded. One out. The finals is pitch. Hamer rips it to left field. Left fielder coming up hard, and he'll make the catch. Wiggins was coming in, thought it was going to drop, and now there's two outs. Here comes Ty S.J. S.J. has doubled, walked, and popped out. That's a big out right there. Big out for the Lions. Because if that drops in, one run scores, and your bases are still loaded. And it's a four game with one away. Her Making that catch outside. now, it's yeah. the run doesn't score and it's two away. So it's a whole different ball game. Then if he dies and he gets by him. Oh yeah, then several runs will score. Probably all three that one ball is short. Short stop will field it. Goes to second and they got him. Mm -hmm. Got the force out. Good play. And that'll retire the side. The Eagles do pick up one more run. It was two hits. And they left the bases loaded. We head to the bottom of the six. 8-3, Covenant Christian. 
AJ Doman Dodge Jeep Ram in Berwick now offers sold order price protection. Deep discounts on sold orders and they protect that price until the vehicle comes in. They're also offering price protection on your trade in. The value of your trade when you order your car will be the value you get when it comes in. And local faces treating local people. Urgent care in Morgan City. Open seven days a week. Call 985-412-2020. Urgent care of Morgan City still testing for COVID-19. Urgent care says go Eagles. So does Virgin's Insurance Agency of Patterson in Morgan City. Get a quote today. 985-401-1184. And high school baseball on KWB July is presented by Core Physical Therapy and Sports Performance. Here to restore the quality of life you deserve on Brashear Avenue in Morgan City. A.J. Dome and Automotive Family at the foot of the Morgan City Bridge in Burry. The fourth annual Nicholas Bowner Foundation Part 3 Golf Tournament Saturday, June the 11th at St. Mary Golf Club. Call 3, I mean, excuse me, 992-8943 for team or sponsorship information. Eagles really missed the golden opportunity right there to get more yep. runs. Yeah, they had the bases loaded with one out and one run in. And couldn't get any more to cross the plate. So Hall Power back out on the mound. It'll be five, six, and seven. Dupuy, Champagne, and Hebert. Zach Dupre. Hall Power did a great job of getting out the last inning with no runs. Yep, he needs to do it again. First pitch swing and a mile high pop up. Cordero coming in. And he makes the catch. That's not an easy play. That was a major league pop up there. And here comes Champagne. Champagne's 0 for 3. Left-handed batter. First pitch outside, ball one. One ball, no strikes. Down low, 2-0. Oh. So you can say Champagne is back in left field, so yes. he's the guy that made that running catch. He that, made that, that really kept this yes. game in check, because he doesn't make that catch. The Eagles might still be bad. Yes. Down low, 3-0. Three, oh. three balls and no strikes. All power. Comes in there with a strike. Jump on, taking all the way. Yeah, he was. He's 0 for 3 tonight. Three one. Ball golfed oh. in the right field, pretty well hit. That right field of Wiggins going back, and it's off the wall. S.J. will field it. He'll throw it in. It'll be a stand-up double for Champagne. He just went down there and got that one. Yeah, he, he hit that curve ball. He went down and got it and just scooped it up. Slapped it out there to right field. Short hops the fence. And now he stands on second base with one away. Carson Abair, who's got a home run in this game, a solo home run, he's got a walk and a ground out. Carson Abair. Off our workout stretch. Strikes. It looked like this curveball broke a little early. If it, if it if it hangs up just a little longer and then break, it'd have been a beauty. But uh, it broke early, which meant it was outside, low and away. One ball, no strikes. This one stayed on the ground. Ball to short. O'Connell get it. 
He'll throw it to third, and they'll touch Chompon out. He, he may have even been out before he touched him because he was jumping to avoid the tag. That's a fielder's and, choice. Yep. Chompon usually, the rule of thumb is if the ball's hit in front of you, That's the, yep. you don't go, yep. you go back. If it's behind you, you go to third. That ball was yeah. in front of him. Absolutely, wasn't it? Yeah. And Ocon made a good read and a good play. And right here is a perfect example of why you have that rule of thumb. You know? If you can get there before the ball, if you can cross before the ball gets there, go. If you can't, stay. Squares the bunt, pulls it back, runner going. The throw goes down with nobody was Nobody covered. covered. So nobody throws, was over yep. there covering. We got some people taking a little nap out there. Well, he squared the bunt. Once you square the bunt, it changes everything up. The coverage is, the bunt coverage is in effect. And yeah, but somebody's assigned oh, to somebody's cover second and second somebody base. Somebody should have. Should have had second base. Pitch was a strike, so it's 0-1. He squared the bunt, and the runner was gone. All power. 0-1. Outside, 1-1. One one. Two outs, 1-1 one one on the batter. Runner out at second. Bottom of six, eight, three, Covenant. Swing and a miss. Oh, no, they say foul ball. Ball got by, and I thought maybe just got by. Well, I, I thought I heard two bumps. That the, you know, ball tipped the bat, then tipped the catcher's glove or something on the catcher anyway, some parts of him. But again, no matter how you slice it, it's one and two. And one two and outs. two, two outs. Here's the pitch from Hall Power. Curveball foul. Third base dugout. So we'll do it again. One ball, two strikes. Sets, takes a look at second. Here's pitch. Curveball just, just got a piece of it. Just got a piece. But that's all you need. Stayed alive. One and two, two outs. Eagles looking to get out of here. And get in there and get at least five to keep the game going. One, two. Curveball again. Got a piece of it. The Richard battling, Hall Power battling. Follows pitch, runner going to third, high, and he steals third base. Yeah. There's nothing Fontenot could have done with that one. It was up high, it was breaking ball up way high. By the time he caught it, the base runner was almost at third base. He had no chance of getting that one stolen on the pitcher. 2-2. Two -two. Side, three, two. Hmm. All five wants to make it happen with this pitch. Three, two. Rip down third, third, third base coach had to duck out the way of that one. Yeah, he, uh, he, he got all of it. He hit it hard. He just a little bit in front. And it's a hard foul ball down the third base line. Three and two. Runner 
runner at third, two outs. Here's the pitch from Hoffauer. Curveball outside. That's the base on ball. So now we got runners at the corners with two outs. And we might have a pitching change. Or we'll discuss what we're going to do with runner at first and third. Yeah, because he got two outs, so. And of course, I think that's yep. coming. It's also, we saw him try to steal a run early in the game. Somebody was on the wrong page, so the yeah. runner stopped, got in a rundown. Yeah. O'Conn took, tagged him out before the runner got to the plate. So mm -hmm. I think that's what the Eagles are discussing. I think that's what Covenant's discussing over there. And you have a catcher on second, on first base, rather. I don't know what kind of speed he's going to have. I think last time that might have been two tone that was out there. But no, it wasn't me. But it was somebody that didn't have a lot of speed. But, uh, yep. Paul Powell's going to stay on the mound. That's going to be Tristan Rogers in the nine hole. He's got to board an error, got to board a base on ball, and a sacrifice bunt. What you'd expect from the nine hole hitter. Yep. That's Tristan Rogers. That's, that's him doing his job. That's what you expect out of him, like Sidney. He managed to score a couple runs. And has a sacrifice run on the, the third at bat. Just off our pitch, runner going. It was inside, and and he was didn't he do anything say with no, it. Let him go. A lot of places they won't give you a, a stolen base on that. It's kind of just an indifference play. Well, I, I can tell you right now in Major League Baseball, eight to three score. Yeah. That would have been in, in difference. It would not have yeah, been a stolen no. base. Here, yeah. I think you give them a stolen base. Like I said, some places. <laughs> High school, you got to get as many as you can. Yeah. One of those in that first strike. In the yeah. major leagues, they pad their stats to get a better contract. Right. <laughs> if I reach short, if it's, a, it's a stolen base in, <laughs> in my book. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> All day. Yeah. One and one to count on Rogers. Ooh, ooh. I don't know where that one missed, but it's yeah. two and one. Two and one to count. As the ball hit the center field, SJ right there, and he puts it away. Okay. So SJ puts it away. No runs. There was one hit. There was no errors, and they left two. Well, we head to the seventh. Last chance for the Eagles. Eight to three. They need five against Evan Duplantis. Local faces treating local people. Urgent care of Morgan City. Open seven days a week. Call 985-412-2020. Urgent Care of Morgan City, still testing for COVID-19. Urgent Care says go Eagles. So does Virgin's Insurance Agency of Patterson in Morgan City. Get a quote today, call 985-401-1184. High School Baseball on KWBJ Live is presented by Taco Bell in Morgan City and by Uvesta open late night with delivery through DoorDash. Conrad Industries serving St. Mary Parish and the marine industry since 1948. GJCurbside.com, your complete online grocery store, including local and regional products. Check our website for our delivery options from our curb to yours. G and J Curbside. And Allen's Communications, locally on TV, cable, internet, and telephone service. Call 384-8335. So it's going to be Burgess. Cordero and Nini scheduled up. Eagles down eight to three. Eagles need five runs before they get three outs to keep this game alive. Six or seven would be better. Oh, 
Definitely. And they've, they've done seven twice against the same team. So here comes senior Drake Burgess. He walked, struck out, and grounded back to the pitcher. Give the planners some credit, too. He's mm -hmm. been out there. Yep. Doesn't have a lot of velocity, but. No. But he's always around the plate. Throws a lot of curveballs. And he's left-handed. We hadn't mentioned yeah. too much about that. That makes a difference, too, that left-handed pitcher. I remember 100 years ago coaching Dixie Youth and heard Skip Burton talk to a bunch of Dixie Youth coaches. He goes, if you got a left-hander on your Dixie Youth team, try him on the mound. Even if he can't pitch this year and you got him again next year, try to make a pitcher out of him again. Everybody wants a left-handed pitcher. So if he's left-handed, you got to try him. Don't see as many. One and one to count. Down low, two and one. You got to stay aggressive, but yet you don't want to swing at pitches out the strike zone. You got to get a pitch you can really hit hard. Here's a two one. Outside, three and one. Down low, and that's ball four. And Eagles are looking for base runners. Walks give you base runners. And that's what they need here in the seventh inning. Brandon Cordero, one for three. It's a strike. Cordero thought about it. He laid off. Cordero. That's it. Line drive in the left field. That's going to be a base hit. Two on, no outs. And here comes Nini. They're starting to time this thing up with the planets down. And he takes strike one. Any over two with a walk. That curveball was high. One and one. Andrew Cavalier on deck. He came in to run for Spitali, so he'll be the batter. Down low, two and one. chase and he doesn't catch it foul ball I don't know if you can see it but I can't see well, anything back there they, <laughs> the way they said it he got another chance yeah. so it looked like he might have overran it or just didn't get yeah. to it but he had a chance at it It was in the field of play I thought it was going to be caught yeah I, I said, thought I yeah in the field of play it was foul ball yes. but, uh, so Nene yeah. with new life two mm -hmm. and two Got to cash in on the second chance. Heaney, it's another one, same spot, but a little further to the right. He must have went through three dozen baseballs at least. I know, a lot of foul balls here tonight. <laughs> Down low, count full. Got a full count with no outs. Runners on first and second. We're in the top of the seventh inning. 8-3 to score. Covenant Christian Lions. Heaney. Face it in the field. Yeah. Sending the runner. Running. Throw comes in. He'll be safe. He'll be safe. Burgess slides in. And now it's an 8-4 game. Now runners at first and second. Here's Andrew Cavalier. And uh, I believe, Seth, this will be his first at-bat in this series. Yes, huh? it is. Yeah. Pitching there for a strike. Cordero on second, Nini on first. No outs, 8-4. 
Hey, you get it back into that four run, one swing deal. And there's a That's base, base hit, hit in the left field Lovely. for Cavalier. And there goes station to station, and the bases are loaded. That's a walk and three consecutive singles. And here comes Wiggins. He's doubled, got on an error, lined out. And again, he was a one swing could tie it up. Here's Duplantis, first pitch, strike one. Duplantis to the plate. Curveball, strike two. No balls and two strikes. That ball hit out to right oh. field base hit. One run one in. for sure. They got a whole Nini. They throw back behind him. Oh no. Nini caught off the base. Oh, the base he got base. back. Empire says he got back in time. I tell you what, I don't know where he was going, but he got back. Now Coach Tutone wants to talk about it. I think he might be questioning whether he got out of the baseline to avoid the tag or not. It was close. It's I one think, I think you could argue either way. And it's 8-5, and now they're going to take the ball out of DuPlantis' hands because that is four straight hits and a walk. And DuPlantis will go out the ball game. Let's see who they'll bring in. Looks like it might be Bear. He's coming to get a glove or something. He pitched last night in game two. Well, that's two runs in this inning, but the bases are loaded with nobody out. Well, they said the Eagles need runners, but they've had runners. They got them. We're back at the top of the order. We got Carson A. Bear, the new pitcher. As he came in relief last night of Scott in game two. He came in and they were struggling and they made some errors behind him as well. So. I said we're not at the top of the order yet. We got a hall power. Yeah. Right there, I was checking my book. Yeah. I said, well, well, where, where, I was going to say, well, I messed up. Well, hall power <laughs> had a base on balls and a base hit. Yeah. So. Yeah, he's, uh, he's done okay for himself. Hey, man, it throws much harder than Duplantis. So. Right. The thing about Duplantis was when they decided to take the strike, it didn't really matter if he got a hit because yeah. – even his curveball, his fastball wasn't fast enough right. to deceive you with the curveball. Right. You could you could adjust, and the Eagles did, and mm -hmm. they they started tattooing the ball. Mm -hmm. one time around, maybe, but you start getting to them guys, and they can sit there, and you're not scared. Yeah. In other words, when you got a guy like Mathern, you got to gear up for that fastball. So that off-speed pitch really is the timing. Well, you time it the same way with him because it was slow and slower. When did they bear that it started the second game? I know he pitched in the second Scott game. Pitched, uh, Scott started. Started. He came in. He came in. In relief. Okay. But then he also went back out. I mean, he didn't yes. finish the game. I don't remember how much he pitched. I think he pitched. Actually, I think I, I think he pitched like an inning and a third. Okay. So, yeah, he didn't pitch a whole lot, but probably a reason why, because he's probably not one of the top well, pitches, he, but he, he goes hard, I mean. He, he didn't start either game. Right. He came in in relief, and then they did have to relieve him later. So here's Hall yeah. Power. No outs, bases loaded, 8-5, top of the seventh. Two runs across for the Eagles so far. First pitch from Scott is high, ball one. One ball and no strikes. High again, 2-0. Oh. Well, 
your nine hole hitter, a new pitcher, you gotta make him throw you oh, at least one, if not, if not two. That's high That's again, it. same spot, three and oh. Three and oh. A ball will score a run. And leave the bases loaded, and you're going to the top of the batting line. 3 0 pitch. That's in there for a strike. 3 and 1. I think I think you probably take another yeah, one. Yeah, make, make him throw you two. Bases loaded and nobody out. And here is Caleb O'Conn. He's walked twice, got a base hit and lined out. That infield single right over the mound last time. That would work pretty good right now. Bases full of Eagles, no out. Eight, six, five, all one. Hey, Bear shaking his head. You just don't like his body language if you. If you're over there in that Covenant Christian dugout. I know. You're not feeling good right now. 1-0. Outside, 2-0. Oh. Here's a 2-0 -oh pitch. That one's in there for a strike. 2-1. Hammer's on deck. And I think he's thrown only fastballs, huh? Since he got up there. 2 1. Ah, 3 1. Can we see a little more Central Catholic magic here? Infield playing straightaway baseball. Nobody up on the grass. Hi, ball four. Ball four. O'Connor walks. In a one run game. Eight, seven, no outs, bases loaded. And the way the wheels came off in game two, you got to think mm -hmm. here, eight to nothing, they, they got to believe. We almost got them shut out. Yeah, I know. I know it was making shut out. You're thinking, how are we going to shut this game out? And now uh, you're fighting for your life. <laughs> Mr. Casty over there, he already had reservations at Outback. He's going to have to move them back a little bit. Hamer. 0 for 4. And so far, the last two batters didn't even have to get the bat off his shoulder. He's also the eighth hitter in this inning. He bats in the two hole, but in this inning, he's the eighth guy going to the plate, and so far, no one's been put out. Ah, right, ball one. One ball, no strike. You can just see the pressure on Bear. It's just written all over his face. Oh, absolutely. 1-0, that's a strike. One and one. So with him throwing all fastballs like this, it's gotta help the hitters. You, you know it's coming. That one's down low, two and one. If he's struggling with the strike zone throwing fastballs, you know he's, if he's got a curveball, we'd have seen it by now. Two, one. That was in there for a strike, two and two. Now you gotta make sure you protect right. that plate. You gotta get a piece of it if it's a strike. Or close. Two, two. Swing and a miss, strike three. Big strikeout right there for Hebert. And here comes SJ with one out. Eight, seven. Wiggins the runner at third. Off power at second. O'Conn over at first. Coach Tuton, go to the mound. That was a big, big sequence oh, yeah. for A-Bears. Yep. You, know, you can see he was laboring out there, but he got the, the call strike, and he threw another good pitch. And he got the strikeout. Base runners got to be heads up to you. Don't want to get lined off into a double play here. That's for sure. 
Wiggins got to be tagging on anything. At least standing yeah. on the base in case you got to go. Right. Yeah, because he's getting hit to the outfield. There's no reason for him to go halfway down. No. I mean, either you, if it drops on the ground, you can trot in, and if they catch it, you tag up, you, ready to yeah, go. You tag up, you can go. SJ's doubled, walked, popped out, hit to a fielder's choice. A bear out of the wind up. First pitch, right back at it. Oh, he's going to double first, Double play. And Covenant gets out of it. Yeah. Well, we said oh, it. Yeah. That's it. There was nothing he can do mm -hmm. at first base. Nothing at all, because it was yeah. just a line drive. Oh, no, you, you, you did. I mean, there's nothing you can do. Yep, uh, yeah, what a ball game, though, folks. What a ball game. The eight, Lions seven. come out and score eight runs, get up eight nothing, and then in the, it's the fifth, the sixth, and the seventh, the Eagles managed to hang seven on the board. Couldn't get that eighth run in. Well, we can't. <laughs> it was exciting, and the Eagles fought to the end. Yeah, it was. What, what a battle it was for the. Some good baseball. We I mean, yeah. we've seen some, you know, close games. They split Thursday night. These two teams battled it out. Then they come here tonight, and like I said, we got an 8-7 ball game. Bases loaded when the game ends, you know. Governor Christian it's will move on to the state semifinals. They're going Calvary Baptist on the other side. Lost off Christian and St. Fred. So three North teams, North right. Louisiana teams. Governor Christian will hold the mantle for South Louisiana. But well, I think they can do something here. Eagles battle back. Tell you what, they could have been out of this thing after it was 8 nothing. We saw them battle last night. We saw them battle again today. No quit in the young Eagles, and uh, they'll be back. And, you know, for our first time doing this, Aaron, it's been a pleasure. I have enjoyed it. Everybody yep, has yep. talked about how great it's been, and we appreciate all yep. that KWBJ does. And mm -hmm. hopefully in the future we can do more of this. Hey, we, we're the same way with you guys at, uh, at the Breeze, and uh, we've enjoy I've enjoyed this. It's been fun. I, I work, first time you and I have ever worked together, and, and I promise to not step on you too many times you during the night. <laughs> my toes are good. <laughs> I didn't. And that kind of stuff, but uh, it worked out. It's been it's been a fun games. In, in like I said, uh, early. It's my second ball game today. I won. I just went earlier to the Burwick game just as a spectator, sat in the stands, and uh, man, this is I just love this to death. Yeah. Well, Good luck to the Burry Panthers, speaking of, uh, as they go to the state semifinals next Thursday, 10 o'clock over in Lake Charles as right. they'll battle Sterlington. Mm -hmm. Also, again, we've said it a few times, happy Mother's Day tomorrow, yeah, tomorrow to all absolutely. the mothers out there. Merle Thomas, happy Mother's Day to you, my mother mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. well that's going to wrap up our coverage tonight. The Eagles fall. Covenant Christian wins the series. They go to the state finals for KWBJ and for KBZ. Mm -hmm. Seth Thomas and Aaron Artigo. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Have a great weekend, and happy Mother's Day.